So when I say we have two years to save the world, it begs the question, who exactly has two years to save the world? The answer is every person on this planet. We still have a chance to make greenhouse gas emissions tumble with a new generation of national climate plans, but we need these stronger plans now. And while every country must submit a new plan, the reality is G20 emissions are around 80% of global emissions. So G20 leadership must be at the core of the solution. At the spring meetings, we need an ambitious round of replenishment for the World Bank's International Development Association, IDA. Doing so could lift hundreds of millions of people out of poverty and increase clean energy access, especially across Africa. Progress in Washington DC on revising the World Bank's capital requirements could free up billions more for concessional lending without asking donors for more money. Next, to help give countries the fiscal space they need for climate action, the IMF can help more countries deal with debts made worse by climate change and the pandemic. For example, by making more use of the Catastrophe Containment Relief Trust. The World Bank's work on climate resilient debt clauses, which allow countries facing supercharged storms to focus on recovery, are another welcome step in the right direction. Everyday finance ministers, CEOs, invest investors, and climate bankers and development bankers direct trillions of dollars. It's time to shift those dollars from the energy and infrastructure of the past towards that of a cleaner, more resilient future. A recent survey by Gallup of 130,000 people in 125 countries found that 89% want stronger climate action by their governments. Yet too often, we're seeing signs of climate action slipping down cabinet agendas.